The evening worship service tonight is 7 o'clock with uh, Brother Mike Lane and the folks from Hackleburg, Alabama. Also this afternoon, there's a men's meeting at 5 p.m. We encourage all the men of the congregation to be here in the fellowship hall at 5 p.m. We'll discuss matters of the church here and hear what you have to tell us, and we're looking forward to meeting with the men of the congregation. Again, encourage all of them to be here at 5 o'clock this afternoon for that meeting. We would encourage you to take uh, just a moment and fill out an attendance card that you'll find in front of you. Visitors and members alike, pass it to the center aisle. We'll collect that at the close of our service today. Brother John McDaniel is our song leader as usual, and we're happy to have him to do that for us. Uh, the first song he selected is number 176, 176, if you wish to turn to that and be ready at the appropriate time. Brother Ricky Spake will lead our minds in prayer. Sidney White will bring us a message of the hour, and Mike Cruz will dismiss us at the appropriate time. Concerning those that I'm aware that are on our prayer list, over and above those that we've been announcing for several weeks now, you're asked to continue to remember Kenise Harper, the niece of Frank and Lola Head. She's continuing in the hospital in Rome. <clears throat> Jan Blank, Eric's father, is to have some tests upcoming tomorrow and request the prayers of the church. Are there others that we should mention? Again, I'll mention again our men's meeting this afternoon at 5 p.m. Again, uh, our time of our services is at 7 o'clock this evening, not 6, but at 7. Please make your plans to be here for that. For those who have been helping gain some uh, change in the Georgia Agape change cans, you're asked to bring those back if you have not already done so today by this evening so that we may get those back to the folks at Georgia Agape. Also, you may have noticed there's a sign-up list in the foyer for our upcoming Golden Age Banquet. For those that uh, wish to attend, you're asked to sign that list. If you need transportation, indicate that. We'll have those arrangements made to get you to the event and back home. For all those who wish to help in putting on the entertainment, there's a sign-up list for that as well. Our food pantry is getting dangerously low. For those who wish to help us replenish that, we would ask you to do so. Ready-to-eat items on pop-top cans are requested. Gospel meetings that begin this week in this area, the Rome congregation is having a meeting that begins today through Thursday the 29th. Steve Rogers is the speaker. There's also a gospel meeting that begins uh, this week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Waco. Brother Jim Merle, Merle is the speaker. There's a gospel meeting that begins next Sunday, October the 2nd, at West Georgia. Brother Eric Gray will conduct that meeting. And again, hopefully you're well aware, our fall campaign here at Bremen begins the second Sunday in October, October the 9th through Thursday the 13th, and we'll have much more specific information that we can discuss at the men's meeting, but as we get closer to it, we'll indicate that as well. There's a 7th Annual Camp in Agahe Fall Retreat, October the 7th through the 9th. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's more information concerning that on the uh, bulletin board here in the hallway, or you can feel free to talk to Brother Johnny. Would you bow with me, please? Dear God, our Father in Heaven, Hallowed be thy great and matchless name. We're thankful for the measure of health that we enjoy today that allows us to be here. We're thankful for each family and person that's here this morning, for their willingness and their desire to be here to meet with those of like precious faith, to study another portion of thy word, meet around thy table, sing songs of praise to thee, give of our means. Father, we're thankful for everything is as well with us as it is at this time. We're mindful of those that would like to be here that due to infirmity could not. We're mindful of those that could have been here that have chosen not to be. Father, for all those who had a public part in our worship, may they have a good remembrance of what they prepared to lead us in or to say. And our worship today will be acceptable in thy sight. Father, we, may we be forgiven of those things that are amiss in our lives so that we may be pure and clean in thy sight and worship thee acceptable this day. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue in our worship now and stand and sing number 176. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Praise him, angels in the height. Sun and moon rejoice be. 
Thank you for singing out. Before our Lord's Supper this morning, we'll sing number 713, 713. <clears throat> 713, Night with Evan Pinion. Sing all three verses. Night with Evan Pinion, brooded o'er the vale. All around was silent, save the night wind wail. No friend. 
thanks for the bread. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity that's been given us this day that we can assemble around this table to partake of this bread which represents the body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, as he hung upon Calvary's cross in our stead. Father, we pray that we'll take this in a way that would be pleasing in thy sight. For this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. anyone missed in the serving of the bread? Let us pray. <clears throat> like Peter and Father, we thank you for this opportunity to sum around this table and take these emblems as we help protect this fruit of vine which represents your son's shed blood on that cross. May those take to do so in a manner well pleased in our sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Did we miss anyone serving the further God? That concludes the Lord's Supper, but now we're given the opportunity to give as we've been prospered. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we approach thy throne again with thanksgiving for the help you give us, for the jobs that are ours, for the ability to carry on the things that help us to prosper. We're so thankful for these blessings, and now, now we will return a portion of that back to thee, that the work of this church may go forward. For this is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Number 375, 375.
Before the prayer this morning, number 365. 365. Man of the sorrows, what God, we thank you for the night's rest. We thank you for our well-being. We're thankful that we can come out here this morning and consider your word. We thank you for everything that you do for us in this life, for our health, for our jobs, for everything that makes this life comfortable. We know that all these things come from you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you loved us enough to send your only begotten Son to this world to live among men and then go to the cross and die the cruel death on the cross, shed his blood that we might hope, have hope of going to heaven one day. We pray that you will be with us every day in our lives, that we might live good lives, that we might be an influence to the people around about us. Pray that you will be with this church and continue to bless it, help us to do your will. Please help us to uh, look for opportunities to serve. We also pray, Heavenly Father, that you might be with those that we know of that are sick. We pray that you might restore them if it be thy will. Also, we pray for those that are confined to their homes. We also pray for those that are bereaved at this time that are missing loved ones. We pray that you might comfort them. We pray that you might forgive us of the things that are not right in our lives. We pray that you might help us to always have a tender heart. We pray now that you might be with Brother Sidney and bless him and help him to recall the things that he has prepared to say. We pray that we might listen. Go with us now through the remainder of this service and on through the rest of our lives. And finally, if we have so lived, we ask for that home with thee. Christ down we pray. Amen. The invitation song this morning will be number 514, 514. Please mark that, 514. We'll sing that at the conclusion of the lesson. And before the lesson, sing number 70, number 70. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. Let us stand. 
and sing verses 1 and 3 before the lesson. And let's all sing out together. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. It is indeed good to see each of you here this morning on this beautiful Lord's Day, an opportunity for us to assemble together, to worship together, and we want to continue today our study of the matter of worship. Our, uh, the elders, and one thing that I meant to mention was uh, in a recent comment about our elders and their leadership ability here, you know, periodically they ask that I speak on certain things, and that's the case here with this matter of worship to refresh our memories and our minds on the matter of worship. In our study last week, we looked at the importance of public worship. Tried to emphasize, going all the way back to the Old Testament, how God has always expected, yea, demanded, those who would be faithful to Him to worship Him. And certainly that's the case in the New Testament as well. In John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, Jesus said, The hour is come and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship God in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Now God expects us to worship, and He expects us to worship in spirit and in truth. In this study this morning, we want to look at one of those items of worship that would be under the heading of worshiping in truth. When we talk about the matter of worshiping in spirit, we're talking about attitude, disposition, as we engage in our worship to God. And we touched on some of those matters in our study last week. I want us to approach the study of singing this morning in maybe a little different way than we have before, but if you are uh, can turn in your Bibles somewhat rather quickly, I'd like for you to try to do that this morning. I want to begin in Matthew chapter 26 and in verse 30. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 26 and in verse 30. And there's also a 
notation in the same regard in the in the book of Mark, chapter 14 and verse 26, which we will look over. You have a repeated statement of what Matthew says in Matthew chapter 26 and in verse 30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Now turn to Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16 and in verse 25. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Now Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 and in verse 9. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy, as it is written for this cause, I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Then in verse uh, 26 of the same chapter, How is it then, brethren, when ye come together? Every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. And Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Hebrews chapter 2. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12. <clears throat> saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church, will I sing praise unto thee. James chapter 5. James chapter 5 and in verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. These verses that we have read in your hearing, to my knowledge, is every verse, and we've read them, looked them up and read them, in less than five minutes, is every verse that I know of in the New Testament that says anything about singing and what is to be done in that connection. Every verse talks about singing. And yet, when we began to talk about this subject, especially in religious circles, and whenever we have visitors who are not so familiar with the Church of Christ come to our services, one of the first things they notice is that we do not use mechanical instruments of music in our worship. And their usual question is, why? In the Colossian letter, chapter 3, from which we read a moment ago, there's another verse that I want to call to your attention in connection with this study. We read verse 16, in which Paul said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now look at the very next verse. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now that verse simply says to us that, that whatever we do, in word or deed, that would obviously involve our lifestyle in general, but it would also include our worship in spirit and in truth. And Paul says, whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. That simply means by His authority. And we often deal with this matter in that regard. Whatever we do in worship, when we talk about worshiping God in truth, that simply says that we're going to worship God the way God has authorized us to worship Him. Nothing more, nothing less. And so the verses that we have read have covered the entirety of that subject. My question then would be very simply this. Where in the verses in the New Testament that have to deal with worship is there anything authorizing the use of a mechanical instrument of music? And the answer is it's not there. Now what is there? I want to notice a couple of things with us in that regard. First of all, I want us to notice that what is there is the command to sing. In Ephesians 5.19, Colossians 3.16, two of the passages that are more familiar to most of us in that regard, Paul simply writing to the church says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's a command. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 that we noted a moment ago where he says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's a command. That's not an optional matter. I think one of the most discouraging things when we talk about the matter of, of uh, music in worship, and sometimes people say, well, y'all don't believe in music. Yes, we do. We just believe in the kind that God specifies. We believe in music. We believe in singing, just like God says. And while we will uphold that to the nth degree, yet sometimes we see brethren who are not singing in the worship service. My question is why? It's a command of God. God has not commanded of us something that we cannot do. He has not commanded the impossible. But somebody raises the objection. Well, Sidney, listen, you, you, just don't, you just never heard me sing before. Uh, somebody was joking, Joyce was joking with Jacob about leading the singing, and he made the comment that I've heard a lot of times. I couldn't carry a tune in a jug with a lid on it or something about like that. Let me tell you something. God never said, harmonize with one another. He never said that. He never instructed us, carry a tune. He said, sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. And so we may not be able to carry a tune in a jug with a lid on it. But we can sing. God has not commanded of us something that we cannot do. And so if I'm going to, as a child of God, during the worship service, refuse to sing, then I might as well refuse to give. I might as well refuse to do anything else that God has commanded us to do. He has not commanded the impossible. And in Second John 9, John says, Whosoever goeth onward and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Now would that not fit the category just described? If we're not going to abide in the doctrine of Christ, which says to us as brethren to sing 
and exhort one another and teach one another, if I'm not going to do that, then I'm not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. And so when we think about this matter of singing, let's, let's not initially run to that, that concept of mechanical instruments of music. Let's not be so quick to defend the truth if we're not going to practice the truth. So what we do have in the verses that we have read is the command to sing. What we do have in the verses that we read is the purpose for which we are to sing. And that is uh, specifically mentioned in verse 16 with regard to uh, our personal benefit in this regard, when he says, Let the word of Christ dwell in your rich in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So there's the command, again, to sing, but the purpose also given, that we are to teach and admonish one another. So when we sing the songs that we sing, the messages of those songs, I was, I was thinking a while ago, and Johnny probably doesn't know the history of this as far as I personally am concerned, but, but one of the songs that we sang a moment ago, Heaven Holds All to Me, is one of my favorites and used to be one of my most disliked. But when I heard it sung at my grandfather's funeral, it took on a totally different meaning to me than ever before. Loved ones are waiting and watching my coming. That takes on a different meaning, doesn't it? And so when I sing that song, I look at those words and I'm encouraged. I'm admonished. I'm taught to continue to live that Christian life so those loved ones who are there waiting and watching for me will not be disappointed one of these days. So through the messages of the songs that we sing, there are tremendous lessons to be learned. And you know, in, in on the other side of that coin with regard to the use of the mechanical instruments, the mechanical instrument doesn't teach or admonish one single lesson. It cannot do what God expects done in our music and worship. So what we do have in these verses, number one, is the command to sing, which in which we all must engage. Number two, it gives us the purpose of our singing in that regard. So the New Testament authorizes singing, but it authorizes singing only. To better help us understand that, there are, of course, some arguments that are used with, with regard to uh, those who would propose the use of mechanical instruments. Someone might say, well, then you need to show me a verse in the Bible where the Bible says, do not use mechanical instruments of music in worship. I can show you that verse. Turn back with me to the book of Genesis. You'll see my point here in just a moment. In the book of Genesis, chapter 6, when God had saw the wickedness that was on the earth, and He decided to destroy the world with a flood, found a righteous man, Noah, and instructed him to build an ark. And in verse 14 of Genesis, chapter 6, God, speaking to Noah, says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms thou shalt make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. This is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. The door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower, second, third stories thou shalt make. You say, what does that have to do with... Thou shalt not use the mechanical instrument of music and worship. When God said to Noah, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, where in the Bible does it say, Thou shalt not use oak, pine, maple, 
sycamore, any other kind of wood. When God gives a specific, He excludes everything else of like nature. He doesn't have to write volumes of books saying, this is what I'm commanding you to do, but I'm also telling you in doing this, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do something else. When God told Noah to build an ark of gopher wood, He in essence by specific command said not to use any other kind of wood. And we can understand that. And so in Ephesians chapter 5, 19, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, and other verses that we read, when God gave a specific, He automatically said in essence, Thou shalt not do anything else like this. When we talk about the matter of music, there are simply two kinds of music. One vocal, the other mechanical. And when we read the passages that we read a moment ago, and again I say, we read every one of them that I know anything about in the New Testament with regard to worship. Every one of them uses the word sing. Not a one of them gives me a choice as to the other kind of music, mechanical instrument. So by virtue of the fact that God was specific when He said sing, He automatically eliminated the other kind of music, which was worship, just like He eliminated any other kind of wood when He told Noah to build that ark out of, out of gopher wood. But you know, when you think about that, that same concept, where does the Bible say not to? Where does the Bible say not to use Coca-Cola and vanilla wafers on the Lord's table? He doesn't say that in those words. But by virtue of the fact that we, are, again, are given specifics, the unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine, everything else of like nature is excluded. We understand that. We need to understand it in connection with the music question as well. But then there are those who want to Go back to the Old Testament, which is mistake number one in this regard. We're not talking about Old Testament worship. We're talking about New Testament worship. But they want to run back to the Old Testament and talk about David and his instruments, and there are passages where there are specific commands given with regard to, to the use of certain instruments at certain times under the Old Testament system. Nobody's questioning that. But I can also read about burnt offerings and sacrifices under the Old Testament system. I don't see anybody running back to the Old Testament to, to justify the, the practice of, of the burnt offerings and sacrifices, and yet the same law that permits one permits the other. What it amounts to is we want to pick and choose that which justifies what we want to pick and choose to do. That's not the way it works in studying God's Word. And so if we're going to run back to the Old Testament for one thing, then we need to run back there for everything. James said, Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all, James chapter 2. So that, that's not a valid argument. And, of course, that would get into another study and just a simple verse, Galatians chapter 3, with regard to the old law and the law of Moses. Paul said that the law, with re reference to the law of Moses, was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So I don't care what you can prove by the Old Testament in that regard. That doesn't demand it in New Testament worship. So we have to understand the difference in the law. I think that's why Paul said what he did in 2 Timothy chapter 2, rightly dividing the word of truth. We don't run back to Genesis chapter 6, read where God says make the ark of gopher wood, and run out and begin to build an ark out of gopher wood. Why? Because we rightly divide the word. We know that wasn't a command given to us today. It was given to a specific man at a specific time for a specific purpose. And so it is with the music question. So we don't run back to the Old Testament to try to justify. But then somebody says, well, isn't the instrument just an aid? Not, not an addition, but an aid. Well, you know, sometimes we, we have to look at some parallels to understand that. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. That's, that's about the simplest illustration that you can find. 
God says to Noah, build thee an ark of gopher wood. That excludes every other kind of wood. That specifies the wood. We've already established that. Now, what is it going to take for Noah to build that ark out of gopher wood? It's going to take some aids of some sort. Now, if this were put in modern language, he'd need him a, you know, he'd need a saw and he'd need a hammer and he'd need, you know, various things that would aid in doing what God said do. Using a different wood would be an addition to doing what God had said do. I bring that parallel back to the music question. The specific command is to sing. Now, what does it take to sing? Well, we need words. Words are an aid to singing. They provide us the words to sing. Those words are compiled in a book. So song books would, would be an aid to our fulfilling this specific command to sing. So we need those song books. Uh, it helps, whether you know them or not, but for those of us who do know them, it helps to have those notes in those song books. That helps us to, to stay on key, although if we don't know the notes, that's, that's not an obstacle to doing the command that God said, but it is an aid to doing it more harmoniously, if you want to think about it in that regard. It's just an aid. But when we add the piano or the organ, or full orchestra, whatever or how limited, then we have taken on an addition to the specific that God gave. When we think about partaking of the Lord's Supper, we are given the specifics. We're given the command, we're given the specifics, the unleavened bread, the fruit of the vine. Now there are certain aids in order to do that. There's a table up here that simply aids. There are trays up here that simply aid in our doing that. But if we put Coke and vanilla wafer in those aids, then we have added to the specific that God gave. So we have to understand the difference between that which is simply an aid and that which is an addition I think we, if we could ever comprehend the fact that, that there are two kinds of music, vocal and instrumental, God has specified the one that He desires, and if we worship in truth, then we will use the one that God has specified. We will not use the one that has been thereby eliminated from the list. So when we attempt to justify that which the New Testament does not authorize, then there are all kinds of complications in that regard. There are those who would try to justify the use of mechanical instruments with, with some references in the Revelation letter that uh, are believed to be references about things going on in heaven. Well, there's just one little problem there. Heaven is a spiritual place, not a material place. So whatever's done there is not going to be done with literal instruments. But if, in fact, God chose to have a mechanical instrument there, that still would not deal with worship in the New Testament church in the present situation. And so we have to do some, some rightly dividing in that regard. Then there are those who want to go to Ephesians 5.19 and, and pull up the word uh, solo, from the original Greek and says that, and, and it literally does to say, to sing with the accompaniment of an instrument. You say, no, wait a minute, preacher, you don't contradict yourself. No, not yet. Wait a minute. Listen to what he says in Ephesians 5.19. Speaking to yourselves, there's the singing, in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody. Now here's the instrument in your heart. There's the instrument that's used. It's the heart. Not some other kind of music. The instrument is the heart. That's where the melody is to be made, in the heart. So we sing and we make melody in the heart to the Lord. 
Here's another thing that's always intrigued me about all of this. When you go back to Ephesians chapter, five, chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, which at Ephesus. And if I stop that there with any other, without any other comment and just simply ask the question, Paul is writing to the saints which are at Ephesus. To which saints is he writing? Well, if you are alert, you'd probably say, well, any saint that's there. Every saint that's there. He's writing to the saints at Ephesus. All right, established. Go back to chapter 5, verse 19. Speaking to yourselves. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Let's, let's allow for just a moment that which is not true, but let's allow that the word solo includes the use of a mechanical instrument. Who is commanded to solo? Every saint. And he says, Brother Guy, in would you say that which proves too much proves nothing at all. If solo includes the use of mechanical instrument, that is a command that that means every saint must sing and at the same time play some kind of mechanical instrument. If not, why not? It's not something that's just designated for one or two or half a dozen. Whatever the command is and whatever is included in it involves every saint, not just select ones. And so when you look at the, the efforts that are made to justify the use of the addition, additional kind of music, namely the mechanical instrument, it just cannot be found within the pages of the New Testament. The command is there. That's the first thing we need to understand. It is a command. It's not an option, folks. So whenever we stand and sing that invitation song, don't take the liberty to disregard the command that God's given to you. But at the same time, don't take the liberty ever to add that which God has through specific command forbidden. So that's why we sing. And make melody in our hearts unto the Lord. That's, and we really, there's a lot more to this. Uh, but, but when you think about Ephesians 5.19, Colossians 3.16, speaking to yourselves, that is a reciprocal action. We're speaking to one another. That's why we don't use choirs and choruses. It's a command for every saint, every child of God. And again, not just a select few. It's reciprocal action that is commanded of every saint. That's why we have congregational singing. That's God's specific command. Worship God in spirit, yes, with the right attitude, the right disposition, and in truth. And I might add, and I've done this before, that I believe that if I've ever been in a congregation that sings with the spirit, this one does. I mean, the singing here is, is it's terrific congregational singing, and I, I, I enjoy being here during a song service. But let's all participate, and let's do it the way God says do it, in spirit and in truth. It could be that you're here this morning and you're not a child of God. We've not dealt with the first principles, but simply stated, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, John 8, 24, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. You're willing to repent of your sins, and Jesus said, Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish, Luke 13, 3 and 5. And you're willing to confess your faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, Romans 10, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made in salvation. And you're willing to be baptized into Jesus Christ, buried in water for the remission of sins, Jesus did say, incidentally, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You can do that today. As a child of God who may have erred from the way, the latter end being worse than the beginning, 2 Peter chapter 2, 20 to 22. If you'll confess your faults, James 5, 16, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, repent of those things that are missing in your life and pray for God's forgiveness, Acts 8, 22. 
you can be restored today. And if we can assist you, we'd be delighted to do it as we stand together. Sing the song. Someday you'll stand at the bar on high. close this morning with number 72 number 72 sing verses 1 and 4 of that before our closing prayer please pass your attendance cards to the center aisle they'll be collected as we sing this song and please remember the men's meeting at 5 o'clock and the change in our time of worship this evening to 7 o'clock 7 o'clock worship we will have pew packers at 640 Pew Packers at 640. Number 72, and then we'll be dismissed. I'm pressing God. Thank you for this beautiful day and all the many blessings you give us each and every day. Thank you for this fine lesson we have heard today. May we take what we have learned and apply it to our daily lives. Please be with the one mentioned in the announcement, one that needs our prayers. Please, please take care of their needs. Please be with the ones. Please forgive us for our sins. Please forgive us as we 
Take us, be with us as we go to our home. Thank you. Amen.